node now. Okay, so like a third-ish of the audience. Okay, hopefully this isn't too far over everybody's head. Um, so if you use Node, you probably use a library that I wrote or maintain. Um, and that's the new NPM JS site, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, so fun, right? Fun? Does that mean fun? Yeah. Okay, yes! Thank you, people, for helping me translate into Chinese. <laughs> Unicode is so much cooler than Arabic or any other character, Latin character set. All right, so fun. Where, where were we? Okay. Can everybody see this? Is that too small? All right. So this is a very, very silly module that I thought would be fun for everybody, um, which is why I needed sound, of course. Oops. <laughs> so this is actually a really fun little idea that this guy built. Um, so this is actually a PNG that he downloaded off the internet and then did this whole ridiculousness with it, um, which I find very silly. And just, just for one more, let's see if I can maybe make it fit the screen. That way it'll seem less silly. It won't scroll. <laughs> So you can do fun things like that. I don't do fun things anymore. I have a boring CEO job now. So I have to do fun things at conferences like this. Um, <laughs> is, this pow is this power? Yeah, power. Is that like the right kind of power? I mean like accumulate wealth and power. So I don't know if I got that right, but I'm trying. Um, so a little bit about NPM. Who's, who uses NPM? Okay, good. Everybody uses NPM. NPM is amazing. And I gave a talk at CouchConf last year about how NPM and CouchDB are the greatest thing to happen to package managers since ever. Um, so this was last year. This was at NodeConf in 2011. There were about 1,800 packages and there were about 730 authors. Anybody have a guess how many packages there are today? Um, who said 10 times? You're, you're close, a little bit less than 10 times. It's 14,000 packages and 3,800 authors. So we're talking like order of magnitude more things than there used to be. And that has a lot to do with, did James speak this morning? James did that. Okay, well, a lot of things that, that James is talking about. He had a great joke, which was that he came to China for one day and he lost his spot as the top module author to TJ, which I thought was pretty amusing. 15 hours on a plane and you're losing your crown. Um, so about three months ago, we launched uh, a new NPM site, which is at npmjs.org. Um, and the thing about the power of NPM is that we really didn't have a good way for you to find modules, right? How do you find modules? You're like, okay, well, this is what you use, so I guess I'll use it too. Um, and we did that. That worked pretty well for things like, you know, async and express and maybe some other things. But it doesn't work really well anymore for random little libraries. Uh, and so that's why we came up with this whole star thing, which is, you know, like favoriting modules. And you should go use this feature because your opinion matters. Um, I don't know, am I logged in? I'm, I need to log in. Uh, so you're all gonna be able to see my password. Not really, just kidding, ha ha. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not very secure. Uh, is that it? No. <laughs> mm, that one? Maybe? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, look at my smiling mug. Um, <laughs> Where are we going? We're going home again, right? Okay, home. Yeah. So I can go to something that I use, like say colors, and I should be able to star it. Oh, no, I can't star it. Damn you, Isaac. Um, I'll use something else that I use. Do I star this? Since when? Damn it. That was going to be such a great feature. Okay, so can I do it on the command line? npm star. 
hey, look at that. See, you can do it on the command line. So I can do like npm star async y and c. Hey, look at that. Oh, did I turn off my socks proxy? I don't think that China likes npm. Um, it's not my fault, I promise. So I need to just, look at me, what firewall now? Oh my god, it's like a whole country that has never heard of SSH tunneling. Um, seriously though, like you guys are all Chinese, like what, why would you even do something like that could be circumvented this easily? It's like why even bother? npm star async, come on, you can do it. Maybe you can't. So apparently it's not that powerful, but it will be powerful at some point in the future. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and so I had some other stuff that I wanted to show you guys uh, about the power of Node.js. And this was actually part of another talk that I gave um, at uh, Node Philly about three, four months ago. And it's, it's called The Powers of Ten. Um, has anybody ever seen that like very silly video? I don't know if they show it in ch in science class over here, but they show it all the time in America, where it's like you know ten to the minus one hundred is like atoms, and then all the way up to universal scale. Yeah, okay, so it's kind of like that, but for Node. Um, so ten to the power of one, right? And this is actually my favorite slide out of the whole deck because there are actually only ten members of the Node.js core team, so. There are like, you know, however, 7,300 authors now or whatever we were talking about and, you know, tens of thousands of users. And it was, is all pretty much done by 10 people. Um, so you should go and like send them a Christmas card or something or some non-denominational greeting if they're not Christian. Um, and this is my humble thank you to them. Uh, so what did I put at hundreds of things? Days since Node was created. This is no longer true. This is now thousands of, this is thousands. But when I did this, it was like 999 days since the first commit of Node. So now it's been like a thousand and a couple. Um, oh yeah, and if, anybody use Ruby? I don't know what that is, but I've heard that it's pretty slow. Um, so it's like, you can get like hundreds, hundreds of requests per second in Ruby. Uh, and you can get thousands of, of requests per second in Node per process, per process. So yeah, like, Really, a fast Rails process is like 250 requests per second, and like a fast Node process is like 2,500 requests per second. So we're starting to understand why this whole non-blocking I/O thing is important. Am I speaking too fast? Yes. No. Okay. Good. Um, as we said, thousands of people registered on npm. My personal favorite. Uh, thousands of packages. Tens of thousands of servers that I've installed Node on. And let me tell you that it is an amazing thing that we can now get distribution binaries for Node. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen these things, you should check them out. Where are we? Uh, blog at the bottom? Yes. Is there a big button? I don't care. I just look at these things. Um, so you can actually, as of Node 8.6, you can go and download the binaries that are pre-compiled for you, which are amazing. Um, they save me a lot of time of compiling Node and waiting for mostly V8 to compile. Um, <laughs> so where were we? So we've made hundreds of thousands of deployments uh, on Nojitsu, so you should go check it out unless it's already been blocked by the Chinese firewall, uh, in which case you should SSH tunnel because apparently that's easy. Um, we log like a million plus messages every day with Winston. Uh, Glenn was saying that they use it at Microsoft. It's pretty much the, the thing that everybody uses, um, which I made it because of a silly quote in a movie. Um, so we can do something like npm search Winston, and we'll start to hopefully see, oh, I didn't update my npm registry. Well, we can just do this, right? Uh, who knows what CouchDB is? Okay, really, that's it. Not okay. You all need to be. Where is um? Where's James? Yeah. Uh, so CouchDB is amazing, and it's how npm works. Come on, SSH tunnel. Um, it's it's amazing, uh, and so the entire npm registry is hosted by our friends at um, Iris Couch. 
and uh, their short URL is uh, ic.ht, or as we like to say, icy hot. Um, and this is the entire NPM registry. You can go out, it's got, you know, 14,000 rows in it, and it's got users and, you know, modules and things. Uh, well, no, it's actually all modules, so I can go, you know, and go find Winston in here. And now we can see it's doing the search that the rest of it wouldn't do. Um, so it has all sorts of things in there. And we can just, I believe, search in here. All documents app by updated start by user by user by field by keyword. I got nothing. Come on, NPM. NPM is failing me more than I, bl I blame the Chinese firewall. Um, <laughs> so now we're in tens of tens of millions of things. Um, so a request we process every month. Uh, so speaking of reverse proxies and things of that nature, um, one of the things that Node is really good at is low-level asynchronous I.O. And one of the best things to use that for is a reverse proxy. So just like my SSH tunnel here is going to some, going out to some server outside of the very silly firewall that your country has installed, and then coming back to my computer, we have an inbound reverse proxy that accepts your HTTP request and then sends it out somewhere else uh, and where you fit in and manage expectations appropriately. How many people have used open source software that we've written at Nojitsu? Okay, I got like one. Who's, who's opened an issue on a project? How quickly did you get a response? Like a day? A day? See, exactly, a day. Um, and that's actually our goal, is like if you have a problem, you have a problem right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not in a month, not in your next release cycle, now. And we're going to get back to you as soon as we can. And that's a big part of how we've been successful writing open source software. Um, and there is room in between those two things. And you see this with a lot of database companies nowadays. They will say, oh, well, we're this brand new shiny database and it's not open source, but it's free. And then one day, maybe we'll charge money for it. So I have more to talk about, but I thought I'd open it up in the middle for maybe some questions, because Q&A has been a bit larger here than I've seen in other conferences. Yeah. Uh, I, um, so we have something that we're going to be announcing in a few weeks that will do distributed SSH in a reasonable way. It doesn't have a DSL like a Capistrano, but you want something that is distributed SSH, right? Um, and that's a big part of, of some stuff that we're working on. I have been working on for a long time. So if you're a Ruby guy, you're probably looking for like a fog in Node. There is no fog in Node, but that is basically what we've released. And I think Capistrano uses fog, right? Maybe, I don't know. Um, but the other big difference about gems and NPM, which is why NPM is so much better, is that NPM vendors everything by default. So for those people who've used Node, you know that like Node underscore modules folder that you see all over the place? That was a decision that we had to make at some point about 16 months ago, uh, where we said, look, having things globally installed is insane, and we need to do that differently. We need to say, okay, well, if you have conflicting dependencies, go ahead and do that. And from the blank stares I'm getting, not everybody knows what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna jump back in uh, and talk about that for a second. Hey, look at that, it finally ran. Um, so going back to my previous point, um, this thing that I wrote called Winston has a lot of libraries that people wrote for it and adapters. Um, and it just took a while for NPM to go outside a firewall. Um, so. Yes, that's right, I understand my backslashes. Uh, So let's say that I have um, something which depends on something else. Hey, oh, that's not what I wanted. Ah. 
So uh, here we go. Um, let's use that same example that we had. Uh, 0 0.5 point uh, 11. I think that's a thing. Hey, look at that. Um, so I've installed a version 0 0.5.11. Uh, it has some nice things to it, but it's not the latest version, right? So uh, the latest version, I believe, is 0 0.6.2, right? Uh, and I have slides about this, actually. That's what happens when you talk too much. People get bored, and you have to go to other. And you have to go to other things. Hey. No. Hey, Couch TV. Yay. Uh, so we won't install all this stuff. Shut up. Package managers. Yay. Oh, yeah. Um, so Humble Troll, Face Palm, Double Face Palm. Um, here we are. NPM. NPM is amazing. Everybody loves NPM. Uh, uh, well, beggars can't be choosers. Um, so conflicting dependencies, right? So node modules and stuff. Um, and so here, here's a conflict, right? You have two dependencies, both of which depend on the same thing, and they depend on different versions of it. So normally, if you were using something like gems, this would just not work. But this works in NPM, and that's why it's amazing. So I still have a lot of time for questions. We can do some crazy stuff. Oh. Uh, packages um, that develop up, uh, uploaded. So there, there are a few things you can do for that. Um, we wrote a module uh, a while ago because uh, there are a few really common mistakes that I see in apps. One is uh, I forgot to include something in my package.json because you know in this small app that we just made over here. Uh, this one, yeah. So now when I look at this, we've installed something, right? There is a dependency here, but there's no package.json whatsoever. So I could just, you know, say if I was going to say, try and deploy this application somewhere, one, there's no manifest, so it's gonna explode. But two, we haven't added this dependency to the manifest. That's one of the main problems we see. Um, another big one is that you have some sort of compiled dependency, which is dependent on a like compiled library that's not available on the remote machine. Uh, and I'm not sure if, if that answers your question, but there are a few things you can do to analyze package JSON. But besides that, you're kind of out of luck. Oh, what if the NPM package will hurt your computer or uh, doesn't work so well? Th there's, there is a, a security uh, exploit in NPM, which is why you should be very, very careful of things that you um, install that have compiled dependencies, because a compiled dependency is something like, um, uh, I don't know. Let's see, I don't even know if this works anymore. You might just yell at me. So this is a thing that I wrote, um, which for the love of God, don't use, don't go use this package, because we fixed this in node eight, um, so that you should never have to use this thing. Um, but it's a, it's a daemonizer. Uh, so it will move your process from the foreground to the background. Uh, and what it does is it compiles some C++ code. Uh, and that C++ code, you're just trusting me that I'm not going to pwn your machine, because I could easily do that. And see, like this, I'm just running you know, GCC. Like, I could be doing anything here. Um, <laughs> so you, when you see that, you better really trust the person who is installing that for you. Okay, thank you. Well, but now you have pre-compiled binaries, so you, know, you don't have to have a compiler tool chain. I'd like to get your insights on native modules. Where do you think it should go? What do you think, uh, and, and I guess that's a two-part question, right? One is, should, should we basically not use native modules? Two, uh, if, if they have a place, wh what do you think should be the strategy? 
compared to where we are now, where we should get to? So um, I wrote up an article, actually. Is my proxy on or off? Um, proxy? Proxy is off, which means I need to turn it on. OK. Apply. We're going back out to the public internet. Somehow Chrome is dead. All right. Um, so compiled modules have a place somewhere because um, essentially there is not everything is written in JavaScript yet. But most things are moving towards the direction of doing everything in pure JavaScript. Um, a good example of this is uh, uh, how many people know what Redis is? Redis? So if you use Redis and you use Node, you should use this library uh, written by this uh, very friendly guy uh, who lives in Hawaii named Matt Rainey. Um, and they just released a new version of this uh, three or four days ago, 07, and they got rid of the compiled dependency, uh, which was called High Redis, which was a C Redis parser for the Redis protocol. Uh, the JavaScript parser is faster than the C one, uh, surprisingly. Uh, a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, but it is. Um, and it doesn't have any compiled dependencies. So we battle all the time on Nojitsu with compiled dependencies because it's just a pain. It's a real pain. Um, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just people who have poorly configured make files or make files that make assumptions about where things are statically linked or all sorts of things that you shouldn't have to deal with. Uh, so I think most things are moving in the direction of pure JavaScript. But if you have to, be really aware of why you have to. Don't just like use something because native sounds good. Native is actually more dangerous. How about how they should be handled in terms of you, you talked about now I go to install a native module, I have to sit there and wait for it to build. So at NodeConf Summer Camp uh, two weeks ago, we talked about this problem. And we would like to have the build farm where say, OK, I'm going to go and uh, I need to install such and such a compiled module. Well, I'm on Ubuntu 11.10, and I already have a pre-compiled version of that. The problem with that is that it's not just the version of the operating system and those things. You need to know where every statically linked file is placed and check the operating system to see if those things are still in the same place. And you need uh, to do a whole bunch of other configuration checks which are non-trivial. And so if that happens at all, uh, it might be a long time. Thanks. So about the NPM again. <laughs> So the so my my problem is with NPM is so it's fine if you have a fast computer and you have a fast internet connection which most people have but when it comes to embedded system where I actually want to use it then it's a lots of work uh, to actually because there's always these these uh, native module whether we want them or not you know it could be like as small as small as micro time or you know node mm map or something some small functionality, but you still need it because well, there's a whole stack of software you, you, that's built on top of it. You don't need microtime, but I mean, anybody using microtime sh in 08 should be corrected. Should be, oh, should, right. should, okay. be, should be corrected. So, so those things are going away slowly, but they're still, right, native yeah, modules absolutely. at some point. And, and so what I, what I don't understand is the, so we have user lib modules and things get installed in there with the name of the package, but they don't, why not keep the version? All these packages have version in them, and they, well, but they, they are, don't. They're, they are kept. They're kept in the cache. They're kept, but they're not kept in there. Why not, the, why can't I have a, a two different version installed? And then when I symlink, when I do npm install in one uh, particular application, I have them symlink to the right version well, that matches the package of JSON. So that seems to me like, well, well, so is there a, a, well, a we reason don't, We don't symlink, but like, for example, when okay. I, those things that you're talking about, like when I go and I install this thing, it already lives in my npm cache. Uh, dot local, uh, dot local lib node modules. So it's, it's already there, right? So it's, it's not going to get downloaded again. Yeah, but then if I'm building an embedded system and I have a hundred well, yeah, of we them, do, we then do I make need to put the cache 
We, we make one assumption, right? which is that you have lots of disk space. Right. And on an embedded system, that might not be the case. Right. And in, in that particular case... And memory case, also, right? Because it, as you yeah, have me multiple memories, versions... Yeah. Uh, well, it's not just the multiple versions thing. Like, you're not going to pay a huge memory footprint loading two versions of a thing into memory. What you are going to pay a high price for is installing multiple native modules concurrently. So if you have, say, two native modules, one that's WAF, which is the old build system in Node, which anybody who's using that, again, should be corrected. Um, and you have one that's JIP, which is the new version. Uh, that's going to be like 80 megs for the WAF process, 140 megs for the JIP process, and then NPM itself is like 40 megs. So if you're running on like a 128 megabyte embedded system, you're already out of memory. Um, and that, you know, again, this is a class of problems that we didn't design Node for. And so, you know, there may be staging steps that you need to. I mean, because again, we, if you had asked me two years ago that like, is Node going to be on ARM processors and like running on Raspberry Pi, I would have laughed at you. Because, you know, back then, Node barely compiled on ARM. Like, people had to actually modify the C just to get it to run. So you had, it wasn't even Node, it was like a fork of yeah, Node. Yeah, that's that a, those are problems I'm, I'm facing. So, uh, but now it, so it you, really you think it's run. valid to find alternative solution, maybe an alternative to NPM that's more suitable? I would say, I mean, if you're running an embedded system and you're trying to run a compiled dependency, you should yell at that package author until they get rid of that compiled dependency. Because I, I hate compiled dependencies. We actually run everything at Node Jitsu without a single compiled dependency now. Um, and when beyond that, for like your embedded system, what you can do is if there's no compiled dependencies, you can do an NPM install locally, make a tarball, and put that on disk without dealing with the cache, without dealing with anything else. So it's exactly the bytes that you need on disk and nothing else. Right. Thanks. Hi. I have one question for NPM. Why NPM try Couch3 to start data? Right, so going back to your question about like all this network I.O. Um, so I can do something which is uh, local, nope, I don't have Couch running. So, um, NPM. yeah, Couch does one really amazing thing, which is replication. Um, so I can go and open up, uh, right, so this is my local, oh, of course, because I have my proxy on. I mentioned how annoyed I am at this firewall. Yeah, I should get a VPN, but you know what? You should just not have a firewall in your country. <laughs> How about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, can I open a pull request to the Chinese government? Um, so uh, I can create a database, right? Um, and we'll call it registry. And I think that uh, uh, Isaac's, I don't know if this is gonna work. So this is like, this is the grand irony of this. Oh, look, we actually, it doesn't, it likes Icy Hot. Um, so I make an empty database here, uh, and then I have this database here, uh, which we know is registry. So I can go into the replicator, and I can say replicate this remote database, ht slash registry, and let's you know clone that or replicate that, I should say, to my local. Uh, and we'll make this continuous. So anytime anybody writes to the public NPM, it will put it on my computer. And, and I hit this button. And it's gonna, you know, do magic couch things. And in a few minutes, um, I'm gonna have a CouchDB copy of uh, what's going on in the NPM registry. The first replication takes about 15 minutes, but that's why it's it's so nice. Um, the other big piece of it is that in every other um, package manager, you have this. I mean, who likes XML? Anybody who raises their hand is lying. Um, <laughs> Yeah, nobody likes XML. So like apt and uh, every, basic NuGet and pair and I mean, it's it's terrible. It's all XML or it's even worse and it's something like uh, gems where it's actual source code, right? Like the package manifest is a Ruby file and it's like what? How do I serialize Ruby over the internet? We like convert it to JSON and convert it back to Ruby. That's a terrible idea. Um, so it's all JSON, the package.json specification. It's easily to replicate. So you can say, clone the NPM registry. This is actually what we do at Nojitsu. Clone the NPM registry, make a private copy of it, and then publish our private packages to like an internal registry so that we can just have the same NPM-based deployments in, internally at Nojitsu, but it's our own registry.
Well, if you don't have enough disk on the, in the embedded system. And we, do some, we have a similar problem at Nojitsu because we run on very, very small memory footprints. So what we rolled out last month was that you actually go out and you build the entire app on another server, which is the same configuration but much more RAM. And then you just take that tarball and store it, and then you pull that down to the little machine, which doesn't have enough RAM to run JIP and WAF and NPM at the same time. So, um, yeah, you had a question? I think he's got the mic. So like, uh, just want to ask something. Like, at Node, just to how do you make your Node thing secure? Like, do you use OpenVZ or Linux containers? or? Is so um, we're based on Joyent. Um, right now. Uh, so what we actually use is, it's built into the Solaris, like the Solaris right. kernel, which okay. SmartOS is, Illuminos right. and SmartOS are a variant of Solaris and SunOS. So it's not a Linux, a Linux kernel? Uh, so it's a zone, right. and it's okay. built into it, and it's, it's a shared kernel type of virtualization. Right. It's not right. para-virtualization that right. you see in Xen or KVM. Okay. Uh, we do have plans for doing uh, similar types of um, container-based virtualization right. on Linux and Windows, so okay. we'll probably use something like LXC, but I know yeah. OpenVZ is an alternative yeah. there. Yeah. Thanks. So one last question. Um, you Back to the native modules, um, cloud providers. Uh, when you when you think about native modules and cloud providers, and the whole idea of cloud provider having to now build when I public, you know, if I push a native module and doing running Node GIP, etc., or Node GIP, what's what's your opinion there? Uh, as far as the type of support, like should cloud providers provide specific support for building node modules? Should they just support yes. node modules if you build them and publish them? Um, so, I mean, we focus on one thing and that's node. And so I have a very biased opinion, that's which fine. is that everything should work all the time everywhere no matter what you do. No matter how broken or backwards your you know, bad developer you are, it should run. Unless you're actually doing something wrong. Um, We've had apps that like shouldn't run that run because we support so much random backwardsness on Nojitsu, as we should. Um, like you don't have to listen on a specific port. Listen on any port, we'll deal with it. Put any modules in there, we'll deal with it. Um, we will build them ourselves. And this build service that we made is gets the job done. Um, do you build them always on demand, or do you cache? Yes. Do you have cached versions? Yeah, we don't. We don't modules? cache individual modules. We will cache your app, and we'll cache the entire set of Node modules for your app. That next step is something that we'd like to do, and um, we've talked a little bit with Isaac about it, but it's, it's quite a bit of work. Um, and uh, you know, when we see a community of cloud providers that want to give me a couple developers to do it, then, then um, maybe we'll change our mind. But for right now, it's a piece that, like, it's one of the reasons why it's so easy to deploy on Nojitsu. It's like we build and cache your module, uh, and we will cache those dependencies in between deploys. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, well, thanks everybody, and I think I'm going to depart with, uh, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, uh. oh so close, so close to a perfect exit. Now it's perfect exit. Oh. <laughs> thanks everybody.